I want to talk a little bit about our, our, our uh, prayer series we've been talking about. We're, we're in week two of a prayer series called The Prayer of Jabez. And uh, I'll get to that in just a moment, but um, it's been referenced a few times today. If you haven't joined us, I really want to encourage you to join us for 21 days of prayer and fasting. We are on day seven, and let me hear you if you've been fasting with us, praying with us for day, through seven days. Come on. That's so awesome. If you feel inclined through this experience that you're like, hey, I want to do that too, then I want to tell you, hey, no, ain't no shame in this game. Jump on in. You can join us for the next 14 days, or if you want extra credit, you won't get it from me, but uh, uh, you can go in an additional seven days. But I think it's just awesome when we take a period of time to just dedicate our lives to T turning down the world's voices, turning down my internal voices, turning down all the voices, and, 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 a lot, and that sounds like I'm saying I hear a lot of voices in my head, and that makes me sound funny. But w just to focus on His voice. You know, we have a number of people who have shared, they're doing different kinds of fasts. Some people have shared with me they're doing a social media fast, turning down all those voices and opinions of the world so that I can just hear His voice. There's many of us doing uh, food fast. I, I don't encourage you telling everybody uh, what you're fasting because sometimes the religious spirit kind of gets in there and you start kind of going, oh, well, I'm fasting this. And they're like, well, I'm fasting everything. And you're like, I'm a heathen and you're a saint and I don't measure up. You know, people never walk away with a win-win. It's always like my fast was better than yours kind of thing. So I don't really encourage that. But for point of reference, some have asked, uh, what I'm doing and, and so you know I'm doing like a Jewish fast which is like sun up to sun down I, d I don't eat any food um, at, at all I just stick to liquids only and then when the sun goes down um, I, I, I typically prepare a meal or my wife has prepared a meal and we sit down as a family and enjoy it together I don't put my kids through my fast I don't put my spouse through my fast everybody has their own fast and and um, so I just want to encourage you what can you do some have started and say I'm giving up sweets some coffee coffee's a tough one for you coffee drinkers where you at hey just like the caffeine headaches are for real come on God didn't call me for that one this year anyway <laughs> Listen, I, I enjoyed this text that I received. Someone said, uh, Sarah said this, Life is tough at the moment, um, uh, at this moment of my life, and this 21 days of fasting and prayer couldn't have come at a better time. I'm just trusting God through this season. And so I want to ask you, what are you praying for? Um, I love that testimonies kick up through this season. Uh, last year we did it, and we start each year with it. Th this is one that was posted this past week. From one of our dream teamers he was actually cody on drums and he said this about last year's fast he said um he's look at that cute baby right there come on he said a, a year ago our church started our beginning of the year fast one of the things i fasted for was that my heart which had grown cold and hard would soften we had already known we were expecting and that we were having a girl and we knew her name and the meaning behind it she was here in the blink of an eye, and today in reflection, I'm humbled in the fact that I get to see her grow each and every day. I was the first to speak to her after she was born, and I made sure to pray over her life and continue to say it over her every day. I couldn't imagine what the love of a child felt like until I felt it myself. I don't even think I could put it into words, but it's such magic. And so he posted these pictures. Um, and look at how God's answering prayers, and sometimes in serious ways, sometimes in unforeseen ways, and even in his way. He knew it was coming, but he was asking God to move, and God has done a work. And I got I to gotta stop for a moment and say... That is actually my nephew talking, Cody. He plays drums, but he's also uh, my wife and I's nephew. And I really couldn't be any more proud if you knew what he's gone through. If you knew some of the uh, battles that he's had in his life, you would begin to just start praising God and believe God can do anything. And I want you to know he can do that for you too. Prayer and fasting works. And so I just encourage you to, to join us in doing that. And so... I'm going to, um, it was about this time last year that we had prayer books like this, and if you didn't get one of these free books, we printed it just for you. Get one on your way out. If you want to hand some out, there's plenty. Grab some from family members or friends or put them at workplaces and um, just sanitize it before so that, you know, you know, 
not multi-touch in itself, lame joke, I know. Anyway, so, so um, and, and one of the prayers in here on page 38 is the prayer of Jabez. It's also online if you're online watching with us and you can check it out. And I hadn't prayed this prayer um, uh, uh, with, a, with a focus before. And so I started doing that and, and God started moving like I'm going to share in just a few minutes. And that's how I knew I wanted to spend next 21 days of prayer this year talking about this. Um, I, I started praying, oh God, would you bless me? Oh God, would you expand my territory? Would your hand be with me? And would you protect me? And I love what 2 Chronicles 4 finishes with. It says, and God, by the way, answered that prayer. How many want God to answer your prayer too? And so we're, we're, we're having this series where we're, we're looking at these four pointed prayer points. <laughs> Some of you must love just how concise it is. Would you bless me? I can pray that. Bless me. <laughs> Expand my territory. <laughs> Bullet point number three. You, you know, um, but... God says that he honored Jabez's prayer. He didn't have to church it up. He didn't have to flower it up. God listened. And, and I, I really grabbed hold of this prayer, and I started praying, God, would you expand my territory? Now, in his context, Jabez's context in the Old Testament, your territory literally was like your social status in life. If you have more territory, you have a higher social status, more clout, more credibility. You have more influence. It, it would be like a modern day, um, uh, if you have more talent on the team, those are typically the people you, uh, you nominate the captain and you give them the most influence on the team. Or if, if you are growing and you're, you're uh, a place of employment and you gain a higher title, you gain with it more influence influence and, and more responsibility this is what Jabez is praying he's praying God would you expand my territory and my influence why for the glory of God and so I started praying this too I said God would you expand my influence and in my context as as a lead pastor uh, I think uh, or I thought God would answer that with like more salvations, more attendance, which means we'll have to have more experiences or services at church. These would be indications that God is expanding our influence, that we can preach the name of Jesus above every other name throughout our city so that every lost soul can know him. And so I thought this would be what it would look like. Well, 21 days ended, and my wife and I got a call unexpectedly from an organization called ARC. We, we, ARC helped us launch this church, which, um, and, and we now partner with them to launch uh, 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 tons of churches um, each year. In fact, I, I think we, launched, we helped launch about um, 80 in-person and digital uh, churches this past year. The average uh, 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 attendance on some of those places are 533 people giving their life to Jesus. And they called us up and they said, Lift Church has been amazing, and we know you're about to be one year old. Would you and your wife come coach some uh, uh, other uh, uh, young couples who have the same dream in their heart to launch a church too. And so we, we got to go down to Florida and we invested in them. And today my, uh, we shared to the, to the uh, crowd, but one of them's already planted in Northwest Maryland and one is planting this coming March in Bangor, Maine. And I'm believing God's going to reach some people. Can I hear an amen? And, and, and as I was flying back, God said, you remember that prayer you prayed? I just expanded some influence in a way you didn't see. I was like, oh, I didn't see this one coming. Then COVID happened, and that doesn't mean more church services. It means no church services. It means shutdown. It doesn't mean more attendance. It means no attendance, and everything goes digital. And then um, we, we, we go digital, and, and, and all of a sudden the view counts just start going on a multiplication exponential factor and God spoke to me again he said did you ask for more influence guess you didn't think it would come like this and and and, and then there was more opportunities to serve the city there the, the the hurts of the city became more and more exposed and people were tired and fatigued and so our team just began serving more and getting involved and we spent over 80 hours at the food bank and and, and we were just helping distribute and and meeting the needs and 
God said, do you ask for more influence? And, and then finally, um, Ark asked at the end of December, would you write an article for our online magazine? And, and the first time I've ever had an article published on um, Ark's website. Um, and, and so I wrote that, and God said, it may not have looked like the expansion you, ma- you imagined, but am I not a God who answers prayer? And this is what I want you to know. If God can do that in my life, what can he do in your life too if you just begin to ask God? In fact, here's the big question I want to ask everybody in person and at, and at, and at home. And that is this. What, when's the last time that you asked God for more ministry? You know, it's easy to ask God, expand my territory. Give me, yeah, give me, uh, expand my fashion territory, my wardrobe, right? I can use some fresh things. But no, actually, God is, he's not against promotions. He's not against uh, progress of different sorts. But what he's really after is he's got a lot, a lot of lost kids. His, there are people hurting. And he's got the solution in Jesus Christ. And he's looking for people to say, ask me. Ask me for more ministry, and I will give it to you. Come on. And and so that's the big idea. This is exactly what Jabez was praying. He prayed, would you enlarge my territory? And so um, this is, in fact, perhaps the only other place Jabez is mentioned in the Bible is 1 Chronicles chapter 2, and it's called the city of Jabez. That's what the Bible says. It's historically debated, but it could be that the city was named after the guy, Jabez, who prayed for more territory. Imagine this with me. He's got just a little bit of land. He's got just four tent pegs, and he gets enough audacity to start asking in Jesus' name, in God's name. Come on, Jesus wasn't born yet. But in God's name, in, in, in Yahweh's name, would you expand my territory? And God answers his prayer, and next thing you know, they're saying, let me tell you about the city of Jabez. There's this person, and this person, and this person, and this first god is a god who answers prayer and he wants us to ask for more in territory i I, i'd like to convince you of that right now if i could some might say isn't that kind of a selfish prayer isn't that a self-seeking prayer well i think if you couple it with last week's prayer point of asking oh god would you bless me but i'm not going to put any boundaries or borders on how you can do it i just ask you in your time when you're ready however you see fit I, I ask that you would pour out supernatural blessing that I can't own on my own. And in the same way, we, when you say, oh, God, would you expand my territory? God points it out in 1 Chronicles 4. Jesus points it out in Matthew 28, some of his last words. It says, Jesus came. Say Jesus. It says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go. Go out and make disciples of all nations. I'm telling you, don't stay here. Don't settle for your little tent peg territory. Go out and enlarge the territory. Go and make disciples in Jesus' name. And then just a, 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 a small period of time passes. And all of God's disciples are in an upper room. And, and they are told this in Acts 1.8. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you're like, oh, that's nice. I'd like power. I'd like might. Why? Why are you going to receive power? He fills in the blank. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, where you at? In all of Judea. Say all of it. All of Judea? All of it. And all of Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He said, in ever-widening territories, in ever-expanding influence, go. So now we see Jabez. God stops to point out a prayer of influence. Jesus commands us to, to believe for influence. And then the Holy Spirit equips us to go out and bring more influence. I think the three of them are trying to tell us something. Is it getting through to you and I? God's saying, I need people. If if you won't ask for more ministry, who will go? Who will reach them? I'm, I'm looking for people who will say, God, I will go. Send me.
Come on. And so that is the heart uh, of God. God is after expansion. Why? 1 Timothy 2 verse 3 says this. God our Savior who wants all people to be saved. Say the word all. All means, I looked it up. It means like all. It means, it means everyone. God wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth of God. And so it takes a few of us saying, God, I don't know how you do it, but oh, would you bless me? Would you expand my influence? And not just my influence so that my name gets bigger. Oh, let my name get, de oh, that I would decrease and you would increase. Here's a little fun fact, if I hadn't told you in a little while. The reason Lift Church has a lowercase i is not because we're trying to be cute or gimmicky. It's a constant reminder that I must always decrease while God is always lifted up and praised, okay? That's why the I is always lowercase because it is not that I'm asking for more influence so that I can brag, but as uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul said, if I boast, it's because I boast in the Lord. Look at what the Lord has done for me. He can do it for you. Let me tell you about the Lord. Come on. Tell your name. Let me tell you about the Lord. That's your starting words for personal evangelism. Let me tell you about the Lord. Let me tell you what he's done for me. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you asked God for more ministry? Like a cell phone tower that, that radiates um, um, waves, invisible waves that go out, and they grow in ever-widening circles. Or like throwing a rock into a lake, that, a glassy lake, where you throw a pebble, and those rings, they go out in ever-widening circles. God, too, is not looking for you to become complacent or settled. God, I thank you for my spouse. God, I thank you for my kids. I, I don't expect anything else. There is something to be said for gratitude. God, I thank you for what you did yesterday. But I believe you're a God who has more work to be done. I believe you saved me on purpose. If I'm not dead, I'm not done. Come on, you sang it before. It's on Caleb. It's on the bridge. You sang that stuff, right? And, and so, God, would you give me influence today? I've never seen a rock thrown into the water that makes an impact. And then the ripple goes out like three feet and then stops. And you're like, oh, wow, what a miracle. The ripple is perpetually <laughs> three feet in diameter. <laughs> it doesn't happen, so it's not meant to happen in Christians' lives either. You don't get to a place where I've graduated to a point of safety and security. Oh, that you would enlarge my territory. Come on, for some of you, I hear revival happening right now. Oh, sin revival. Like, like, I remember three years ago, I had a faith go, and it was enticing. It was exciting. It was, it was invigorating. And, and then I stopped, and I hear the Holy Spirit of God saying that you need to ask God for more ministry. Ask him for more influence and see what he does. I've never prayed this prayer and God not answer. God, I just discipled someone. They're standing on their own now. I think they, they got the Christian walk on their own. God, would you send me someone else to disciple? I've never had God not answer that prayer. If you want to be heard by God, just start asking for more influence. I've done this one before. Some of you athletes might get it. Uh, um, think, can you pray that? I, I've done this before. God, let me not suck when I go on the soccer field. Because if I do, no one's listening to me. So I'd like to score a goal, preferably in the upper right. Because that's just really cool. And, um, <clears throat> and let me use that influence for the glory of your name. I've said this. God, I haven't got to tell anybody about you the last few times I've played soccer. Would you give me an opportunity tonight? I've never not had God answer that prayer. And it's just crazy when all of a sudden someone turns to me and goes, Hey, I've been following you on Facebook. I'm like, well, then you know what you saw because I'm not very good at social media, except for sharing the good news of the gospel, okay? And so anyway, like a cell phone signal going out, you are called to send out his love in ever-widening circles. Don't settle. Tell your neighbor right now, don't settle. Come on. If you're alone, home alone, tell the camera, don't settle. Tell, find a mirror, you know, put it in FaceTime mode. Don't settle. Sounds like self-help stuff. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get into how do I apply this, right? How to make the most of this influence prayer, okay? Here, here's how you can apply it. Three simple things. Number one, discover the influence you already have. 
This is, this is more of a mental exercise. This is more of a, God, show me the influence that I've been overlooking. And I, I love poetry when it's not too odd or weird. I, I, I prefer it in modern language and not in Shakespearean because then I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. Tell me what it means. I don't have a clue. And, and, so, <laughs> and, and so from time to time, I come across a good poem. I, I, I want to read this one I came across called the, the Little Chap Who Follows Me. A careful man I want to be, a little fellow follows me. I do not dare to go astray for fear he'll go the self-same way. I cannot once escape his eyes. Whatever he sees me do, he tries. Like me, he says he's going to be the little chap who follows me. I must remember as I go through summer sun and winter snow, I'm building for the years to be in that little chap that follows me who is the influence you already have the little chap who follows you i'm not just speaking to parents who've got kids i'm speaking to i'm speaking to um, uh, people who have influence in their workplace people who have influence in the city people who have influence with this circle of mothers people who have influence with a facebook group people who have influence in a s athletic sphere or a school or, or or a circle it doesn't matter who are the little chaps who follow you and sometimes w we don't even realize the influence we got there are people who go to church with you who look up to you and you don't even know it and i I have got to be um, building for them in the years to be in that little chap who follows me. I, I start praying, God, would you show me the influence I carry? Because you could only do a, a, a few things with that influence. You could waste it. Oh, I didn't know I had it. <laughs> you know, I, I wonder how that one will feel. If I get to heaven one day and God says, I gave you a ton of influence in this area, what'd you do with it? Oh, I didn't know I had it. <laughs> Why didn't you ask me? I would have told you who you think put you in that sphere, right? Like who put you in that neighborhood? Who gave you that angry neighbor? Right? Someone told me in the first experience, uh, Pastor Drew, I was I, I was praying what you prayed all day long. I, I held on to that bless up, bless down, bless all around. And then her husband kicked in and said, yes, yeah, she needed it too because, you know, that honey mustard story you told, you know, driving through uh, uh, Wendy's and they leave the Arby's off, uh, uh, the, the, the honey mustard sauce out, and you got to bless them too. Bless them, God, they're having a bad day. He said that happened to her twice this week. Left the Arby's sauce out of the Arby's pickup. And you said, I said, now pray prayer point number two, and that is, oh, that you would bless me and the Arby's person and expand my influence so I could buy that Arby's and get it right next to no. <laughs> Listen, we have got to realize the influence that we have and use it for the glory of God. What are you doing with it? You can invest it. You know, sometimes we so often hold back and we don't share the good news or we, we keep it in private or we keep it in closets. There's something great about having a prayer closet that you're not just doing Christianity for show. It shouldn't always be on display. But if it's always private, then, then the little chap who follows you is not seeing the message to follow. R raise them up in the way they should go so that when they grow older, they do not depart from it. Why don't you read in front of the little chaps who follow you? That means read in front of your kids. I'm talking about read the word. Read in front of your employees. You, you know, read in front. I, I, I was so encouraged when I used to go to schools a lot and, and teach the kids. And some of the kids would go, man, I was bold today. I read my Bible at the cafeteria table. I was like, go ahead, man. Like, like, like wh why, not, why not show that I'm not ashamed of the gospel? It is the very power to save your soul, right? Um, wear it, you, you know. Wear the word of God. Artahomage.com has got some great gear. They are giving me no kickback whatsoever for saying that. But I think they got some cool, relevant-looking gear that's got the message of God on it. Or you could wear Lift Church gear because at least you're pointing them to God or in the direction of connecting with God. Why don't you uh, uh, read your word in front of them? Why not worship in front of them? I've told you before, I was so moved by... Um, one of my girlfriend's dads, before I knew Jesus, he'd walk around the house just singing worship songs everywhere. 
I was like, man, I have never once desired to sing the songs I heard in the church I grew up. But here he is singing everything. In fact, he plays in his radio. He worshiped in front of me, and it did something for my spirit. It gave me an example when I was the little chap who was following him. You know, why not, why not serve in front of them? Why not make it like a, a family affair or, or tell, you, tell your whole small group, we're going to have a serve day this small group semester, and we're going to go out and we're going to work at the food bank, or we're going to go uh, to the homeless shelter, and we're going to do some work together because I'm going to use the influence to serve. Uh, when I got saved, uh, I, I, was, I was dating this girl. I was trying to figure it all out. And her, her dad, when I would show up so that I didn't go to church alone, I'd show up to their house, and her dad had the Word of God open on the, on the breakfast table. He said, good morning, Drew. Come on in. And he's, he's reading it. And I, and I noted that, that, like, he spends his mornings reading it. it. It had an impact on me. And then we went to church, and then afterward, we ate a little food, and I thought, cool, the day's done. And then he approached me and said, Drew, I'm going to the prison later tonight to preach the word of God to the, those incarcerated. Would you like to come with me? And I said, uh, is it safe? <laughs> I said, they go, uh, I'm kind of new to all this. I don't know if I can contribute much, and I'm not really gone. He said, Drew, it would be great. I'm going. If you'd like to come, there's an open invite. And I was like, I would never have the opportunity to serve and to preach in a prison if it was not for someone else serving in front of me and so I went and so I still am excited about the day that the doors will open up I want to to, to launch a a, a, um, a prison ministry where we can bring the word of God into places like that if you got a hook up holler at your boy I'm still praying for that all right and, and, and share what you're doing on Sundays with them share what God's speaking to you on your heart share what you heard share the testimonies when's the last time you told your co-workers you should have been with me yesterday <laughs> like Sunday morning God touched me here's what happened we were singing this song we come on God people are looking for it um does your life message, not your Sunday message, does your life message speak that you wholeheartedly believe in God? Do the little chaps who follow you believe you wholeheartedly believe in God? So, number one, discover the influence you already have. Number two, ask for more ground. Ask for more ground in God's name. Oh, one pastor that I, I, I reached out to this week, he wrote back, Drew, I know y'all are doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. What are you praying for um, this year? And I said this. I wrote this back. My heart is set on loving our city so well that it falls in love with Jesus. Believing to see more of this vision this year. I'm asking God for more opportunities to serve. I'm asking God to open more doors to go into the prison. I'm asking God for more doors to get more involved serving our city. I'm asking God to send more people who say, sign me up uh, uh, so that we can go out in the name of Jesus and serve more people. Why? For the lift of the Lord. God's love is going out in ever-widening circles, and we don't go, that's enough. This will do. I got my four ten pegs. I'm just going to be, uh, I'm going to suffice. No, no, no. God's saying, ask ask in fact jesus said ask and it shall be given to you seek and you shall find knock and the door will be answered when's the last time you knocked on the doors of heaven asking for more ministry opportunities i feel like small groups are going to kick up like some small group leaders you you're like well i could do that or, or maybe you join the dream team and you say listen i just want to be a part of being a a a a uh, loving on others and and so ask seek knock instead of trusting for promotion in my own stock you know I, I've ne I've decided I've never once asked for a promotion I've decided God you're the God a sovereign over it all um, your brother could use a little bit of a pay raise and and I'm doing my, I'm doing my best God um, when you see fit would you speak to my employer and, and you, know, you know what's so much cooler than going into the office door with my own stock going, hey, you need to give me a raise? You know what's really cool is when they say, um, um, hey, Drew, can you come up to my office? Uh, we want to give you a raise. You start going, oh, God. <laughs> my own stock didn't do that. I just learned to ask, seek, and knock. Come on. Uh, come on. That's just for some of you. And then finally, um, discover the influence you already have. Ask for more ground. And finally, Pray for Lift Church's influence to enlarge. Pray for your, your whole church, the influence to enlarge. Here's some of the prayer points that I have for our church. Influence with the people of our city. 
You know, I, I know that there are people hurting in our city, and I want to bring the solution of Jesus Christ to them. That's why uh, we are next month, we are going to have a marriage conference. We had it last year. Go ahead and put that up there. We had it last year. Come on. He must have shot that video on the same day, honey. Look at that. <laughs> That's, this guy is one of the greatest mentors in my life from Louisiana. I've asked him if he'd come up on Valentine's Day weekend. I know it's not popular to have conferences right now, but we are willing to rent a larger space than we need to so that there's enough social distancing to allow the hurting marriages and wanting to be married people to learn some skills on how to live for God and serve one another well. And if you're excited with with me about that come on put your hands together because i cannot wait it's going to be uh february 13th 12th 13th and 14th is that right on friday night saturday morning we'll have a marriage conference and then on sunday morning um we'll have pastor greg in person talking about marriages i want to invest in marriages are hurting right now there's a lot of chiding and bickering and fighting and you, 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 a cabin fever happening and so we we know that god's got solutions in his word so let's open it together and get into it i'm also asking for influence with the city city officials we're about to open up a second 5013c called lift city so that we can we're asking god to for influence with grants so that we can receive more funding to go and serve the city more i i, I can't wait to see what that turns into i'm looking forward to it but i'm just saying god we're not going to sit back if the city's hurting and you've got the answer we're going to go and so we're going to go if you want to go with me come on uh, i'm also praying influence for land or a building expand our territory we rent right now in the regal but um we are believing that one day we are saving and being good stewards of our giving and so let me show you a little bit of where we're at some of you have asked where we're at we currently have uh, a little over fifty two thousand dollars saved in our savings account that comes from um uh, some some like legacy offerings some of that as well as end of the year surplus every single year lift church has has been um um, in existence, we have had a budgetary surplus. That's all two years. Come on. <laughs> all two years. All two years. We, and and we're, we're saving it towards investing in a future. Um, and so we know that any facility is going to cost a million or more. Um, uh, you know, a million or more to either renovate or to build from scratch, probably closer to uh, three or four million, which means to have credibility with a bank. And to even have the discussion and get to the table, we're going to have to have about a quarter of a million dollars, 250, uh, I'm sorry, a quarter of a million dollars, $250,000. And so we have done such a great job getting to here. Come on, y'all give it up for one another. And the thing we know about these kinds of things is they, tip, they typically exponentially accelerate. So I'm really excited about this, but this is just where we're at. And so I'm asking for more influence. Maybe, maybe someone in the city wants to give it. The prayer of Jabez says, would you expand my territory? It doesn't say, here's how. So I, I just ask, I seek, I knock, and we'll see. <laughs> I, I pray enlarge in our influence for Delmarva. I think more of Delmarva Peninsula needs more life-giving churches. And so I'm believing that God would raise up influence of leaders and uh, uh, for us to send out campuses uh, throughout Delmarva. This will not be the only church location for Lyft. And finally, I ask for enlarging of our college because in order to send pastors, leaders, worship leaders, administrators, and even just Christian-minded, uh, uh, impactful people in our area, I, I want to raise them up in a college that is Christ-centered, preparing them to make an impact. Not waiting for tomorrow, but starting today. And so these are things that I'm praying. And so Number one, discover the influence you already have. Number two, ask for more. And number three, pray for your church's influence to grow. If you receive that and you say, I'll do that with you, Pastor Drew, say amen. Let's, let's finish as we do uh, each week this series. And let's pray a prayer out loud. This is, there's no special power in this prayer. It's just one that I've crafted to pray the prayer of influence. But I encourage you to pray something like this the rest of your week. If you would, just bow your head, close your eyes, connect with God. And just say, God, let's all say it out loud together. Say, God, 
Make me effective in my sphere of influence. And open new doors for me. Doors that will give me influence to reach more people. Help me to be a good steward of the responsibility you've entrusted to me. I pray for greater territory to impact for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.